The following is a presentation of SC State Athletics. The South Carolina State Bulldogs opened the 2019 college football season at home against the Wofford Terriers. The Terriers come into the season ranked number eight in the NCAA football championship subdivision preseason poll. They're 6-2 all-time against the Bulldogs and won the last matchup 28-21 back in 2006. Can the Bulldogs flip the script on the series and the polls with a home opening upset win? You're about to find out. Coming up next on the Buddy Pew Show. You are watching the Buddy Pew Show, featuring highlights of SC State University Bulldogs football. This week's matchup, the Wofford College Terriers versus your SC State University Bulldogs. Our sponsors are the County of Orangeburg, Palmetto Health, the South Carolina Education Lottery, the Regional Medical Center, State Farm Insurance Rescue It Agency, Simmons Funeral Homes, Vital Care EMS, and the City of Orangeburg. And now head coach Buddy Pugh and our host Ernest Robinson. Record-wise, the Terriers have dominated South Carolina State. Coach Buddy Pugh, though, was so encouraged by what he saw at the end of the season in his young Bulldogs that he opted to come back and coach another season. A win against a top-10 team in state rival at home in the home opener would make it all worthwhile. First of all, uh, it's good to be back. Uh, I'm excited as all get out to have the opportunity to be with these guys. You could see toward the end of last year that we were starting to come around a little bit, and you could, you know, think that this team might be pretty good. So. I'm excited about them. We've had a good camp. All of our guys have been focused, and we haven't had, you know, it, very many issues. And our guys seem to be ready to go. So I'm excited about this team, this 2019 version of the Bulldog team, and looking forward to seeing how we play today against this tough Waffle team today. Talk about the team that's ranked number eight in the country. I'll tell you what, it's not like you're starting off with a cream puff. It's a good football team, very solid. Like to run the football on the ground. Talk about that, and, and their hope to maybe trying to become more of a passing team. Is that more of a myth? Yeah, well, you know, they say they're going to throw the ball around a little bit. You know, I doubt it. You know, they'll probably still, you know, do a little trick something here, a little throw deep ball here. The thing they do to you, though, is when you overplay the run, they, they, they kill you with the one-shot ball. And, you know, although they may not throw it a bunch, the, the little bit of time they do throw it, you know, it kills you. So, you know, our guys have got to be extremely disciplined. They've got to do it exactly like their coaches have taught them. If they do that, then, you know, then we feel like we'll be okay. Talk about the maturation of Tyrese Nick, who struggled last year early on, but really came on and, and really led the team down the stretch. Uh, I think Tyrese is ready to have a breakout year. He's uh, uh, looking like he's going to be a better passer. He's going to be a more accurate passer is what maybe I ought to say. He's uh, always been able to throw the ball far and hard and all that kind of stuff, but now he's getting a little bit of a touch game, and his progressions are better. So. You know, I'm excited by him. We've got some some help for him in the receiver in the receiver group. We've got a big time guy we think outside in the Shaq Davis kid from down in Somerville. You know, uh, Burroughs is back. You know, some of the other kids, you know, in that group, you know, pretty good players too. So I'm excited about what we can do with Tyrese. Hopefully it'll give us a chance to open up the run game some because he really can run it. And if we throw the ball effectively, it will really make our run game work. Coach, you can't leave without talking about the defensive line and all that experience up front. Those guys, Paul McKeever, they've been playing together for a long time. And Terrell Goodwin, that group. Talk about them and their importance. Well, Paul has had a, had a really good camp. And Rod Parrott is the guy that's probably had the, you know, the most outstanding camp of the bunch. We got big Shaquille, Shaq Krause back. But Shaq's not going to be able to play today. We got a little bit of an academic deal. We're working through it. Hopefully he'll be straight for next game. But, you know, we've got some defensive front guys that are, you know, big waffles kind of guys, and they, they, they should be good uh, guys to take up space for us, so I'm hoping that we'll play really well up front along with our linebacker. All right, quickly, Coach, what's it going to take to get the win? Well, you got to stop waffles run game. We got to be able to create some run game ourselves in offense, and then, of course, you know, offensively in general, you know, we've got to be effective. Thanks, Coach. Let's take a look at Saturday's first half highlights. This is Dawson Hennis kicking off for Warford as he approaches. High end over end kick's going to be fielded. Nope, it's going to go into the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. Football's on the far side. Wide side to so the quarterback's right. Shotgun snap. Nick back to pass. Nick looking long, dialing up long. Got a man out there. Shaq Davis comes down with it. 
first down Bulldogs into Wofford territory at the 25 yard line. Nick in the shotgun, shotgun snap. They give it to Bain up, no, play action fake and a catch, touchdown. What a one handed grab in the end zone. That's the Montrez Burrows. Now Bulldogs shifting on the offensive line on the point after. And point snaps low. Betterson gets it up, his toe is in it, it is up and it is good. So we don't have the time, but we do have the score. Tyrese Nick into the end zone to DeMontrez Burles. It's seven nothing South Carolina State. Four down lineman for the Bulldogs. Shotgun formation, shotgun snap, back to pass. Quarterback throws that, it's blocked. Passes up, it's intercepted and dropped. Domingos Wilson had it. He was headed to the end zone and dropped the football. Oh my goodness, he was thinking of the touchdown celebration. He's a talent too. Bulldogs almost blocked the penalty mark and go down. That's going to be running into the kicker. Oh, South my. Carolina State just ran into the kicker. Nathan Walker in the backfield. Back to pass. Newman throws it out in the flat. Luther has it, makes a catch uh, on the little bubble screen. Gets into Bulldog territory up at the 37 yard line. Toe is in it. It is up. It's high enough. It is good. So Wofford's on the board. Our score after one quarter of play here in Orangeburg South Carolina State, seven. Wofford three, first and 10 from the Wofford 33 yard line. Back to pass. Newman steps up in the pocket. He's got a lot of room across the 40. Newman at the 45. Newman hit and brought down at about the 48 yard line. Football on the near hash as they attack left to right. Bulldogs now switching up in the secondary. They give it over to the right side and hit and knock down. My goodness gracious. Nathan Walker was hitting the backfield. Domingos Wilson put his elbow in his chin and drove him into the turf. That's a loss of two on the play. Joe Newman, the quarterback, looking over the Bulldog defense. Snaps. Hand outside. Going backwards is Morgan. He's tackled down, coming in, making the tackle. That was Tyrell Goodwin with the penetration. A loss of three on the play. Tyrese Nick in the court in the shotgun. They throw it out in the flat. It's caught. Shaq Davis makes the catch, trying to go forward. They've got him stood up, and I don't know why the whistle's not blowing. Shotgun snap, Nick back to pass. Nick looking long. Nick throwing slant. Caught at the 35 at the 30. 25, 20, 15. Demontrez at the 10. Demontrez down to the two yard line. Nick at quarterback. Baines in the backfield. One receiver each way. Two tight ends. Nick, quarterback keeper in the end zone. Touchdown. Pringle snap is good. It gets it down. Toe is in it. It is up and it is good. And we're in the second quarter. We can't tell you the time, but I tell you what, we're shouting the score. It's South Carolina State, 14, number eight, Walford, number three. Walford with the football at the 49 yard line, their own. 135 to go here in the first half. Mosley rolling to his left, throws it out there, intercepted. South Carolina State, B.J. Davis has it at the 45-yard line, down to the 43-yard line. Shotgun formation for Tyrese Nick. Back to pass Nick, looking long. Nick's in trouble. Nick gets free. Nick rolling. Now Nick throws it out. Got a man out there. Burrows caught at the 15-yard line. Burrows down to the 10. Burrows at the 5-yard line. First. Shotgun snap, Tyrese Nick back to pass. Nick dialing up long. And it is intercepted in the end zone. And the score at the half, South Carolina State 14, Wofford 3. We'll be back with more of the Buddy Pugh Show and the All Heart Player after these messages. Every day, you'll find the most innovative orthopedic care in the Midlands at Palmetto Health USC Orthopedic Center. Each of our highly skilled, compassionate physicians specializes in a unique orthopedic condition, caring for people of all ages and stages of life. We'll guide every step of your treatment, from diagnosis to recovery, so that you can get back to feeling like yourself as quickly as possible. You win when you choose Palmetto Health USC Orthopedic Center. Since 2002, the lottery has helped award more than one million scholarships. So when you play, you're not just taking a chance. 
also giving one. I was off my game every day. My hip got worse and worse. The coach's arthritis progressed to the point where his joint was bone on bone. Between the pain and the loss of range of motion, he decided to have the hip replaced here at the regional medical center. I was walking the very next day. I was going so fast, they said, slow down, coach, slow down. It feels great to be coaching again. The Regional Medical Center. We're changing how you think about health care. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you stumble over a blade of grass. Come on. Coach, to begin this football game, Wofford won the toss. They elected to defer, put you on offense first, put some pressure on your offense. You came out, responded with a seven-play, 75-yard drive. I don't know when South Carolina State has opened the season against a top-10 opponent and drove it right down the field on opening gun. You know what? That was the best feeling, knowing that you could actually hang with those guys. We got our guys going there at the very beginning. We got a first down. Uh, I think we ran a little option play. We knew that we couldn't run the football up inside on Wofford with any real consistency. So what we did was we kept our uh, plays in a way where we got a chance to have some success early. And at that point then, you know, we got the ball on the field. We hit a big pass play to uh, to our freshman uh, wideout Shaq Davis, and then we got it in. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, that was probably the, 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 the what set the game, you know, in the direction that we got it going. Let's talk about setting the tone. You're talking about running the football, mixing in with the pass coach. There were some passes, not just big outside plays, but the slants that Therese Nick was able to hit all night long. He did. Uh, he threw some good balls. And generally, Tyrese throws some bad ones. Uh, he throws more good ones now at this stage of his career than he does bad. And we've got some receivers that can catch him if he gets them in a way in the correct percentage. So Shaq is, we think, special. Uh, uh, DeMontrez Burroughs had a play, had, had, had over 100 yards receiving. And, uh, you know, we can get ourselves, you know, I think into a position where if we could really continue to develop those guys, I think that we can be a, a pretty good offensive football team. You start talking about the offense. Of course, now you go on defense, and your defense sort of set the tone, had some new guys on defense, but everybody's talking about, of course, we talked about the experienced defensive line, but your linebackers came out of nowhere and just cut down uh, Wofford, and they had, could not deal with the speed. They did. Um, uh, the linebacking core as a whole. I think B.J. Davis is a little different kind of looking guy. He's tall and wiry. Kind of reminds you of Darius Leonard a little bit. And Cornelius Walker kind of keeps those guys together. He's a big He's a he's a he's a little bit bigger guy, but at the same time, you know, he's not quite as big as those guys. And then last but not least, uh, John L. Bryan played really well. And we got some other guys in Yablonski Green and some of those other guys. So we got a group of linebackers coming along. And in another couple of weeks, we'll get Chad Gilchrist back. I think we'll have, you know, about as as deep a group of linebackers at that point as we've had in a while. When you start talking about this first half for South Carolina State Bulldogs go in the locker room up 14 to three. We've been there before with Wofford, especially when you play well in the first half and they've come on in the second half. <laughs> You're exactly right. And, you know, I really want to get started with a bang, you know, in the second half because I was concerned that we had run so many defensive snaps in the first half that we might be, you know, getting a little bit tired. But our defense went out and got them stopped. I think we might have gotten a three and out at the very beginning. And then from that point, then, you know, we got the ball down the field again, I think, down there eventually and scored again. I think our defense continued to put us in short field situations where, you know, we got the opportunity to score that way. That, that was probably the, the key to the whole game, the way our defense did those particular short field plays for us. All right, a Palmilla Health injury report for the Wofford game coach, and it's a, a tough injury report because that first guy to go down, Tayshawn Baines, a huge loss of the Bulldogs. It is. Uh, we, we thought that Tayshawn was going to be, you know, our thousand-yard rusher for the year, and he appears to have some sort of knee injury. When you say knees, you know the first three letters that everybody thinks about. I'm hoping that that's not the case. But uh, we'll find out, I guess, in another day or so, you know, what his uh, diagnosis is. And then B.J. Davis had a little bit of a foot deal at the very end. I think he actually heard it at the beginning of the second half. And the fact that he played the rest of the game makes the doctor state that he might be okay, but he's got a little bit of a crack going there. And 
And, uh, you know, I think we had, who else did I have? Malik Mickle was injured, and yeah. Shaq Davis, of course, yeah, was Bengal. Shaq, Shaq Davis, our uh, big wide receiver, our big young freshman wide receiver, had a little bit of a foot deal also. I think it might have been an ankle, maybe a little bit of a, of a knee too, but I'm thinking that he'll be all right next week. All right, that's our Palmetto Health Injury Report for the Walford game. We'll take a time out here on the Buddy Pew Show. When we come back, well, this week's all-heart player on this edition of the Buddy Pew Show. Every day, you'll find the most innovative orthopedic care in the Midlands at Palmetto Health USC Orthopedic Center. Each of our highly skilled, compassionate physicians specializes in a unique orthopedic condition, caring for people of all ages and stages of life. We'll guide every step of your treatment, from diagnosis to recovery, so that you can get back to feeling like yourself as quickly as possible. You win when you choose Palmetto Health USC Orthopedic Center. This week's all heart player, not hard to find on the football field, Coach, because he was all over it. Eight tackles, four tackles for loss. What a game for B.J. Davis. I think he had an interception and knocked the ball out. Uh, I used to get so mad with him when we were practicing against him when he was on the scout team last year. And uh, he just reached out and make a play somehow or another. He did that to Walford tonight. He makes plays just naturally. B.J. Davis, and I, I said from the first time I saw him, that he was almost a splitting image in the in a uniform of Darius Leonard. And, wow. You know, we think that he might be the same kind of guy down the road a piece, but he's just kind of starting to find his way. But he's a freshman, and I'm going to tell you, I think he's going to be a great one. So I'm excited about him. Our uh, all-heart player this week, B.J. Davis of South Carolina State. We'll take a time out when we come back. We'll have Saturday's second-half highlights on this edition of the Buddy Pugh Show. My first thought was, what is going to happen to me? Am I going to live? My second thought was, I needed to live because I thought about my children. Betty's mammogram showed a lump in her breast. We surgically removed the cancer. And Betty was referred to Mabry Cancer Center, where she received chemotherapy and radiation therapy. It was an opportunity to live again. The Regional Medical Center. We're changing how you think about health care. Today, I'm cancer free. Since 2002, the lottery has helped award more than one million scholarships. So when you play, you're not just taking a chance. You're also giving one.
Every day, you'll find the most innovative orthopedic care in the Midlands at Palmetto Health USC Orthopedic Center. Each of our highly skilled, compassionate physicians specializes in a unique orthopedic condition, caring for people of all ages and stages of life. We'll guide every step of your treatment, from diagnosis to recovery, so that you can get back to feeling like yourself as quickly as possible. You win when you choose Palmetto Health USC Orthopedic Center. Joe Newman is back at quarterback now for the Wolford Terriers. Split backfield as they attack left to right. Option to the left. Newman trying to get outside. Could not do it. Shotgun formation now. They throw it out in the flat. Shaq Davis has it at the 50. Gets oh. up to the 45-yard line. Stretched forward. Football in the center of the field as they attack left to right on second and four. Newman back to pass. Newman looking long. Throws it out in the flat. Intercepted. To Kobe Durant. Picked it off by South Carolina State at the 32-yard line. Nick back to pass. Here comes a blitz. Nick in trouble. Nick running football gets the first down at the 20. Makes a man move. My goodness, he made the move at the 15 and left the defensive back standing in his tracks. Tyrese Nick is on the center. Nick straight handoff. Daytron touchdown. My South man. Carolina State. Daytron James from two yards out. Josh Pringle the snap is good. Kim gets it down. Bredesen's toe is in it. It's a line drive and it is good. So, we don't know the time, but we don't care because we know the score. Yes, indeed. South Carolina State 21, Wofford 3 here in the home opener. Bulldogs taking on the number 8 Wofford Terriers, and uh, we got a long way to go. Still got six seconds on the clock. Option to the, to the left. Newman trying to go someplace, and Newman's going to be knocked down for a loss back to the 22-yard line. Could Boy. not get outside. Janelle Brown had containment, but B.J. Davis. Boy, <laughs> he's playing a super game tonight. Shotgun formation for Joe Newman. Newman, play action, fake back to pass. Newman throws it out there. It is caught up at about the 35-yard line right at the first down marker. Sure. What a beautiful catch. No, that's a catch. That's the first down. Joe Newman at the center at quarterback. Newman, option to the right, keeps himself, got room at the 40. Newman gets first down and more, down to the 28-yard line. They'll put it down at the 24, at the 19-yard uh, line. 29-yard field goal attempt. It is uh, up, up, and it is, good. it curves back around, it's good. South Carolina State 21, and Wofford 6, going to be the end of the third quarter of play. First and 10, Wofford. Two Terriers to the right, one to the left. Newman back to pass. Newman looking long, throws a slant, intercepted. South Carolina State. And let me see who made that interception for South Carolina State. Coming up with the football, that is. Number 24, no, 28. That's is Janelle Brown. Shotgun formation to reach Nick a quarterback. Nick give, gives it to, no, throws a slant over on the left side and breaking tackles. Man, LeBron fooled me. I thought LeBron had the football. He pulled it out, threw it to Shaq Davis. It's the first down under the 32-yard line of Wofford. Pringle to snap, Austin Kemp to hold. Snap is in it, toe is in it, it is up, and it is oh. no good. Split backfield for the Terriers. One receiver each way. Newman again on the outside, and the pitch is knocked down. The ball is down and on the field in the backfield, all the way back to the 30-yard line. Wofford moved just then. They didn't call it. Stepping up is Newman. Newman throwing the football out. Intercepted. South Carolina State on their interception for the Bulldogs. That's, That's number 12. That is the kid out of Hartsville, South Carolina. That's Jalen Evans. Bulldogs leading 21 to 6. We're in the fourth quarter. Michael Terry snap. Play action fake. Nick throwing the slant. It is caught. Shaq Davis at the 20. Shaq Davis down to the 15. First and 10 Bulldogs. Corey Fields from the shotgun. Third down. He throws it up. And, and oh, and the penalty marker goes down. Thomas Rodriguez is over there. Rodriguez didn't know where the football was, but he was being held. Michael Terry to snap. It's a snap. They give it to LeBron Morris. Morris tries to dance outside into the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina State. LeBron Morris, his first touchdown in a while. Snap on the point after it's up, and it is good. Yep. It's 28 for South Carolina State. The number eight, the Mighty Wolford Terriers have only scored six points. Mosley has it. Second down from the eight-yard line. Inside handoff into the end zone. Touchdown for Wofford. 
South Carolina State with the win, 28 to 13 over Walford, and it wasn't that close. Second half coach playing without Tayshawn Baines. You had to go back to old reliable. Datron James came in and really kind of solidified the running game and were able to get up by two scores, and it made such a big difference in this football game. And you're exactly right. Uh, uh, Datron is an old standby, and we got LeBron Morris out there somewhere, too. He's, a, I think, a, a, a top-notch running back, and we need to figure out how to get Omar coming. So we got a bunch of backs in there. Tayshawn was just so much different than the rest of those guys because he was bigger and faster. But now I don't know exactly where he's headed, and we will, I guess, maybe find out in a couple of days. But I'm excited about the fact that we continue to be able to plug in the next man up. That's just kind of how it works. So, you know, we have issues, you know, and as issues come about, you know, then we got to find another guy. We've talked about the defense. Let's talk a little bit about your offensive line coach, angered by Michael Terry, Alex Taylor, Jalen Page. I thought those guys did a really good job, coach, up front. They had some, they had some good moments in this game, and Mike Terry is starting to actually emerge as the leader of that crowd. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, sometimes I had to beat Mike up. I don't know if I can depend on him to keep everybody else straight. But now I'm excited about that group and the job that Nashawn Goddard is doing with them. I think they got a chance to really come on and be a nice – uh, complete group for us, and then we got a couple back uh, uh, up guys that can, you know, can fit in there when somebody gets banged around a little bit. Uh, Pat McNeil uh, uh, played a good bit, and Francois McFall got a chance to get in there some. We got a couple more that's developing, so we'll see, you know, just how much we can get out of that group, you know, as we go a little bit farther along. Big upset went for the Bulldogs over Wofford. Now, of course, Lane comes to town, Division Two Lane, and Coach. It's a dangerous game when you play somebody after playing so well, you try not to have a letdown. How do you keep that from happening? Let me tell you, that is a possibility. And, uh, you know, I've got to come down off cloud nine, and I think I, I think our team does too. We got the storm, you know, that's kind of lurking out there, and we want to try to, you know, make sure that we kind of make sure that we err on the side of caution, you know, with the way we deal with our kids. So we're looking forward to Lane coming in here next week. We're hoping that the crowd will come out and uh, and see this team play. We got some guys that you all enjoy seeing playing, and uh, you know this is an opportunity for you to get a chance to see them again this coming Saturday. Quite a win for South Carolina State. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. One quick question: Where does this rank in wins for Buddy Pugh? Uh, it ranks high, you know, as far as wins go. Uh, but you know what? You got to put them away and move on. All right, we move on. Next week, Lane comes to Orangeburg. Kickoff is at 4 o'clock. It'll start at 345 on the Bulldog Football Radio Network. So we hope to see you folks next week in the Oliver C. Dawson Bulldog Stadium. Willie Jeffries will feel when the Bulldogs take on the Lane Dragons. And, of course, next week right here on Fox Sports Southeast on the Buddy Pugh Show. Thank you for watching the Buddy Pugh Show, featuring highlights of SC State University Bulldogs football. Our sponsors are the County of Orangeburg, Palmetto Health, the South Carolina Education Lottery, the Regional Medical Center, State Farm Insurance, Russ Hewitt Agency, Simmons Funeral Homes, Vital Care EMS, and the City of Orangeburg. Join us again next week for highlights of SC State University Bulldogs football.